I would like the court to know and understand that I no longer have a big brother. He called me biscuit head all my life because from a little kid, every time my mom would get up every morning to make fresh biscuits, I would be there. As the baby, I got the first one. And so as I got older, and in my adulthood, he would then just call me biscuit. I won't get to hear that anymore. We won't get to laugh at him because he couldn't dance, but he tried. And we won't get to, to reminisce about all the times having grown up in the South. My mother would make copious amounts of sweet tea and he would drink it all and leave a corner and put the pitcher back in the refrigerator. We won't get to do that. No more Christmas. No more birthdays. No more family gatherings. His grandchildren won't know him. He has two adult children that they don't have a father anymore. And while he was the oldest, and both of my parents are deceased, you would think the oldest would be the head of the family. We don't have that now. So it's just the five of us left. There were six of us. Now there's the five of us that are left. And we won't have those memories any longer. You know, I sit here and I, I spent a milestone birthday in the courtroom because of my brother's death. And that's something that is now never going to change. I just ask that that whatever happens here today, that we get some type of peace out of it. And do you have any opinion as to what you would like to happen as regards in regards to sentencing? As I think anyone would want, any family member would want in any situation like this, we would ask for life, because it's, it's just over nothing. His life was taken. He didn't die of natural causes. All right, thank you. Thank you. We all call him Ken. He was just he, the big brother. The big brother that liked to boss us around. He had this nickname that he always called me. It was duty. Always doing, he said. You can always find me doing something. And that seemed to be a problem with him, by him being the oldest. I can remember one Christmas, he got this BB gun. And he didn't have a target, so he asked me to stand near this tree. And I did, not knowing that I was going to be his target with this BB gun. And I still have that mark on my leg. That would be the only thing that I have left to remember him by, is this little mark on my leg. Ken used to come to the house, to my home. and. Him being the biggest, being the oldest, he thought that he could not only boss me, but boss my daughters. And they weren't having it. 
he would always say that no matter what, I'm the oldest and that I had to abide by his rules. And my, one of my daughters was in the military and she came home and he was there. He just happened to come that Saturday and she knew how to play cards. I didn't. So he wanted me to be just a bystander, not participate in this card game. But she was going to teach me how to play spade and he just went off and it was just like a conversation going back and forth with two adults, which she was my oldest and would have been his, his niece. So I remember that that day and now that's all we have is memories. I can't call him if I wanted to. I can't visit him if I wanted to. I can go to the grave site, but he can't respond. Do I want to go to the grave site? No, I don't. I would prefer him being here. I would prefer him coming around. I would prefer him calling me with jokes and leaving them on my answer machine like he normally do. But I don't have that anymore. And what is your opinion as you sit here today regarding sentencing in this case? As I think about it, knowing that I can't see him again, I would like for her to have the same thing. He got a life sentence that he did not ask for. As I watched her leaving out and she was crying as she was going through those doors. That's the same way I felt when they closed that casting on him. That door would never open again. I'll never see my brother again, only through pictures. The same sentence that she gave him I would like to see the same sentence given to her. Where he got a life without parole, I would like for her to have death, life without parole. He got death without parole, I would like for her to have life without parole. Well, I would like to say on May 7th, 2019, I had no idea that when I called my brother, that I would be inundated with phone calls from law enforcement from Clayton County, Georgia. I immediately, I immediately panicked and feared the worst. I had no intention on answering those calls due to fear. I answered the phone by mistake and told the gentleman what county I lived in. And within five minutes, my wife called me and told me there was a deputy at the house to see me. My life from that point has never been the same. The following day, I found myself repeating to my wife, I do not know how I'm going to tell my parents or explain to them how this happened. And they had been deceased for years. Never again will I be able to hear him say, hey you, get off my mountain. At 53 years old today, I know what he was talking about now. But the defendant took him off of his cloud. The defense attorney in this case attempted to paint my brother as a nobody. He was nothing. It was just good intentions going bad. It's a drug user, could have been a drug dealer. 
Could have been anything but an innocent man. But one thing about this situation that I would like the court and you to know, Judge, that Kenneth Herring, he wasn't heavy. He was my brother. And on we go. Thank you. But, now, Mr. Herring, what is your opinion um, today as it relates to sentencing in this case? At, at some point, in my life, I'm going to need some healing. My opinion as far as judgment in this, I feel that whatever the court gives her, which should be life without parole, she deserves more. All right, thank you. Thank you. Oh, one second, Mr. Harry. Mm -hmm. Mr. Herring, yes. um, hopefully throughout the trial, I, I began this by saying it's a tragedy for all parties. Mm -hmm. And my condolences once again to you and your family. I'm just hoping that what happened in the trial was therapeutic and you're able to put closure to it and move on. All right, thank you. Thank you. 